What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for yet another Tottenham update regarding injuries and potential transfer stories as well. Before we get into that, please do head over to wearetottenhamtv.com for your latest articles. And also we're on podcasting platforms such as Spotify for your audio versions as well. But let's get straight into the update. And we're going to start off with the biggest concerning news regarding Destiny Udogi. As he confirmed on Instagram a couple of days ago, an injury brings my season to an early the end um, it doesn't take away from the how grateful I am to every person that has supported me this year and Spurs official did confirm he says we can confirm destiny Udogi has undergone surgery to his left quadriceps having sustained an injury in training earlier this week the defender will continue his real rehabilitation with our medical staff and expected to rejoin the squad during pre-season we're all behind you destiny um, yeah so that is a massive kick in the face uh, regarding Destiny Odoggi out for the North London Derby out for the remainder of the season and he's also going to miss the Euros in the summer as well um, what a great season he's had and it's just a shame it had to end this way just before such a massive game yeah, it's absolutely gutting and it's gutting for Spurs as well because he's such an important player for them because of how important um, we play with the fullbacks, uh, you know, how they invert, how they defend as well. Udog is a massive part of that with his strength, with his speed, um, how he's performed this season. He's been a, v a very important cog to that back line. So with him missing now, that is a very concerning development. And the fact it's come out of nowhere as well is um, really hard to take. And it's just, you know, we want out of nowhere Spurs announced he's just out for the season off the known hit of an injury obviously he clearly has been struggling with something recently because I don't think he's been at his best for a few weeks to be honest so maybe it's just a culmination of um, he's been struggling with something then he aggravated it in training and now he has to have surgery on it so absolutely gutting about destiny um because we really needed him for the run-in. And it's all about how we go about replacing him and how we go about managing the situation without him because he's one of the few players who we don't really have a natural replacement for. Yeah, exactly. And you're looking at the players that can potentially fill in that role. I mean, Ryan Sessegnon's also out, who we haven't seen in, in a very long time. And yeah, we are going to do a video on how Spurs could potentially line up a few different alternatives to Destiny or Doggy, so watch out for that. But in other injury news, we're talking about Pedro Porro, who's also been out since, uh, well, he went off injured in the Newcastle game, didn't he, with a hamstring injury. Paul O'Keefe says that Pedro Porro is being assessed. Tottenham are hopeful that he will make it for the North London derby. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not hopeful, to be honest, um, that he's going to make it. The way he pulled up against Fulham, he was punching the ground and he didn't seem um, happy about the situation at all. That tells me that it's going to be unlikely he'll face, an awful, he'll face Arsenal. But I hope I'm wrong. I hope he will. Um, because if both fullbacks are out, it's going to be a big struggle, not just um, on the ball, but off the ball, containing Arsenal as well. Um, so it's... It's a real difficult situation. The last time we had both fullbacks out, I think it was Wolves at home and we ended up losing. And that was a big part of the reason we lost is their struggles in that, in that position. I remember Pedro Neto had a field day that day. Yeah. So it's going to be difficult. Let's just hope that he, he can make a recovery. But I also worried about him being rushed back and then aggravating the injury and then being out for the season as well. So they've got to play it safe. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, we're in a bit of a precarious situation going into the North London derby this weekend. Um, in terms of potential contract news as well, Ali Gold says that he understands Spurs have held talks with Brandon Austin over signing a contract extension with those club-trained homegrown issues um, that he recently spoke about. This makes sense as he's been on the bench 33 times in the past two seasons and is well-regarded. Uh, you talk about someone that's well-regarded. I mean, he's 25 years of age now. I don't think he's ever had an appearance uh, for Spurs apart from in friendlies and stuff. And we signed Fraser Forster to leapfrog him in the pecking order as well. So I'm not sure that highly regarded thing is quite genuine. If he was that well regarded, he'd be our number two. The fact that we've never trusted him tells us that we don't trust him um, to perform even that role and even step in for a game or two. So it seems as though we're literally doing it for, for, for that purpose of the um, homegrown quota. And if he's happy to do that role and Spurs really think it's necessary, then I'm all for it. But it doesn't seem to me like it's a case of we really believe this he could be a goalkeeper in the future or anything like that. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Fraser Forster's contract does come to an end at the end of this season. Um, if they don't take up the option to renew his contract, does Brandon Austin get an upgrade to our backup keeper or are we going to go in the market and sign someone else? Good question. 
um, if we do sign someone, it's going to have to be an English keeper, I'm assuming, because I don't think we want to fill that space with another foreign player. So I think it probably makes sense to promote him if, if we're giving him a new contract. But the fact that he hasn't played for Spurs yet at that age tells me that is that a smart decision to make him number two? I'm going to let, let the coaches decide on that one. But I've never seen him play, so I can't really make a judgment whether he's good enough or not. Yeah. It's so true. Uh, but in terms of potential transfers, let's talk about Giovanni Lo Celso as Estadio Deportivo claimed that Tottenham midfielder Giovanni Lo Celso will be one of Real Betis's big targets this summer. And there's even some quotes from the Betis sporting director, Manu Fajardo. And he says, Lo Celso is a player who has already proven his worth here, um, who continues to do so when he goes with the Argentinian national team and who is also very complimentary to Nabil Fakir. So it's clear where their head's at. Doesn't mention the any form for Spurs. Does no. <laughs> doesn't mention he proved his worth when he played in a Tottenham shirt. Um, maybe soon that he's so rarely seen in a Tottenham shirt, but it'd be a good signing for Betis. Obviously, he had his best season probably of his career when he was at Betis, which convinced Spurs to part with the best part of 50 million to sign him. I think he got 16 goals in that season. And, uh, you know, watching him for Betis, he seemed like a prop, a really good attacking midfielder who can get on the score sheet and get a goal contributions. He's never really been that for Spurs, unfortunately, whether it be in time on the pitch or the position he's taken up. Um, so for me, if it, if it works for all parties, that'll be that'll be a really good solution. Again, I like Lo Celso. If Spurs decide to keep him around because they really believe in his quality, um, I think he's a good player. And I think he's a good squad option, but it's always those that prob that age old problem about getting him on the pitch. That's always been his biggest issue at Tottenham. And for me, if we can get a, um, a cut price deal to sell him, use that money to reinvest in the squad, I think I'd go in that direction if Betis are willing to put up the money. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with him going into his final year of his contract. I mean, as much as we all like him as a player and the, the talent that he does have, it's the injuries that are always going to hold him back. So I think it's time to probably move him on this summer. Um, next up, we're going to be talking about Timo Werner as Palermo Calcio say that Roma... Um, intend to move for Timo Werner, Timo Werner should Tottenham Hotspur pass on the opportunity to sign the forward permanently. Roma have decided against signing Romelu Lukaku and have identified the German as an alternative to him. I don't think Werner is anything like Lukaku, so that's strange. <laughs> uh, especially re, uh, what Maybe is, they're going in a different direction because they got a new manager. But especially the way he's been playing for Tottenham, he's not even a striker unless you know they see him with another change. But um, when it comes to whether Spurs should take him up, obviously we've been saying recently that we should take him up because he's done such a good job on the left wing. But I'm starting to get worried, to be honest, about whether him signing on the wing means we're not going to sign another left winger. And if that is the case, I don't want to sign Timo. And uh, uh, Ali Gold is saying that um, he reckons Son's going to be moved back out to the left uh, next season. I just read a, a, um, an opinion from Lily White Rose, who obviously has a few contacts at the club, and he's saying that uh, if Tottenham were to go for someone like him, like Nico Williams, they wouldn't sign him and Werner, probably one or the other. And if that was the case, I would definitely not sign Timo. I would definitely go for a, an upgrade in that left wing position, go for a younger option. And as well, go for an option that's starting to look ahead in terms of a replacement for Son for the future. We know Son's a great player. He still has a lot to give. But at 31, going to be 32 next season, you have to start thinking about life after Son. And Timo Werner doesn't do that for me, if if that's going to be the case. So, again, if, if Son's going to be seen as a striker for next season, I'm happy to bring Timo if it means bringing another one in. But if the if the if Tottenham are thinking to next season of using Son more as a left winger and not a striker, I don't think we should be signing Timo. Yeah, that's absolutely spot on. Absolutely spot on. Like, if we were to sign Timo Werner as our only winger option this summer. I'll be very angry in terms of that um, trying to move us forward. That just doesn't, doesn't move us forward whatsoever. It really doesn't. So Timo Werner is only acceptable if he's like a squad filler and a squad option for next season. And um, look, if, if Roma are serious about him and Roma want to bring him in, then that kind of takes away that decision. Um, if if we don't, well, it doesn't because it, we got first option on him for 15 million. So I kind of, I like Timo. I do like Timo. But like you say, if he's going to be our first option, I'd prefer him just to go to Roma. No, but the thing is, I don't think he w if we sign him and Son's going to be our left winger, I don't think he would be our first option. Obviously, Son would be. So he would come in as a squad option. But I just don't think Son's good enough to be our main winger every week uh, at, the, at the, the stage of the career he's at. So for me, you would have to bring in someone 
like a Nico Williams is looking to the future of life beyond Son. Bringing Timo Werner as a squad option as backup to Son for me is almost like in a, in a year's time or even during the season when we might have to look for like two wingers soon. When I said first up, I mean like in the, uh, bringing into the club the signings in the summer first mm. up. So that's what I meant. So, like, so we need, to, like you say, we need a succession plan for Son. You can't bring in Timo Werner and think that's a succession plan for Son. Nico Williams is sitting there waiting with a forty-three million release clause. Go and get him, and go and and if you do go and get him, then it's acceptable to bring in Timo Werner mm. as well. Not just Timo Werner, and that's it. It's a ridiculous way to manage the the transfer window. I'm starting to get a bit concerned. I'm yeah. starting to get a bit concerned. But we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. And last but not least, we've got uh, rumours of Gabriel Osho of Luton Town, as Give Me Sports say that Tottenham are. Considering signing Luton Town centre back Gabriel Osho as a free agent this summer, Fulham central defender Tosin Adarabayo and Bournemouth's Lloyd Kelly are alternative free agent options as well. So it looks as though, judging by this report, we're looking to bring in a freebie again. A free a f- English freebie uh, yeah. looks like. Well, that's what we'll be linked in. I, I find it hard to believe we're going to go for Osho. He's been all right, but Luton league goals for fun. He's got a few own goals as well this season, hasn't he, Osho? Um, so I don't know whether he is good enough to be a Tottenham team that is looking to really progress and maybe fight for a fight for something big next season. Um, I don't know if he's these are the kind of guys who we should be looking for. To be fair, in terms of what you mentioned, Lloyd Kelly, I've recently he's been playing really well and uh, he's been playing really well at left back as well. So maybe he's someone who can left centre back, left uh, and left back and fill in both areas. I've been more impressed with him. So if he's available on a free. Um, I'll definitely go for him over Osho. Yeah, and he's just much more of a natural fit on that left-hand side than Osho is, than um, Adarabayo is as well. So I think probably Lloyd Kelly, if you're if you're limited to those three options and those three options only, I probably would side with Lloyd Kelly as well, to be fair. But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think Spurs should be raising their bar a little bit higher than just going for free transfers in the centre-back options this summer? And do you think that Brandon Austin should be getting that new contract and be upgraded to the backup choice at the goalkeeping position as well? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs. Spurs.